Hello, welcome to the Trey Elds Radio Show. Thank you for joining us this morning. Today, my special guest is actress and acting coach and teacher, Miss Cheryl Felicia Rhodes. Thank you, and join us in a minute. Okay, my first question to you is, how did you get started being an actress? How did you get started in the industry? Okay, uh, my name's Cheryl Felicia Rhodes, and I have been acting, oh my goodness, since uh, professionally since about 1979, so 40 years. I could fib and say I was five at the time, but I wasn't. <laughs> I've been a, a, a college graduate from the University of Iowa. Uh, I was a theater major there, and then I went uh, to the Chicago area, which was where I was from, Western Springs, Illinois. But uh, I went. I started uh, taking some more classes there. I was starting to book jobs, but I worked both at the St. Nicholas Theater, uh, which is no longer in existence, but uh, David Mamet and, um, uh, let's see, uh, uh, well, William Macy, folks like that. But then I also took classes at Steppenwolf Theater uh, uh, with uh, Jeff Perry, um, who has been on the show Scandal and various shows. Mm -hmm. Uh, But that's where I met the late John Mahoney. Who uh, 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 actually? I met him over at St. Nicholas Theater, and we did a scene together. John was the father on Frasier and so many great films. But that's you know how I start, got started in the Chicago. World. And then I went to Second City. I went to the Players Workshop, Second City, and those classes were taught by Josephine uh, Forsberg, and, uh, and and actually initially her nephew uh, Martin Debat, uh, who sadly passed away a few years ago. But jo- and so did Josephine. But Josephine meant so many fabulous people, uh, Bill Murray, uh, Steve Carell, Shelley Long, George Wendt, and she mentored me, and uh, and there I met my comedy partner, an uh, uh, actor by the name of Douglas Wood, mm-hmm. and the two of us started a comedy team called The Fine Line, and we really took off at that point, and, uh, and became famous in the Chicago area, and that's how we started. Yeah. Do you still do theater? Are you still acting and active? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. As I say, I just, I, I stopped with how I started. Um, my comedy partner, Doug, and I were seen by the actor McLean Stevenson. Uh, we, we'd done a stage show that was produced, um, of course, with the help of my brother Mark Rhodes. Mm-hmm. And uh, McLean Stevenson from MASH saw our show and brought us out to L.A., where we were seen by Barry Gordy of the Motown uh, fame and he did a show called the Motown Review with Smokey Robinson. We signed with the William Morris Agency. We were on the Merv Griffin show, which was a great show at that time. And so then I was acting professionally in Hollywood then uh, for the next 21 years. Um, I stopped doing the comedy team, but I was on the Tracy Ullman show. I was on Saved by the Bell, Married with Children. I was uh, one of an ensemble company along with Ben Affleck in a TV series called Against the Grain on NBC. Uh, And I played Mother Goose in children's videos. So that was all my Hollywood connection. But I was doing theater at that time, too. I did a musical production of Three Sisters. So in 2006, I moved to the Washington, D.C. area, and uh, I started doing my acting school here, which is called the Cheryl Felicia Rhodes Northern Virginia Acting School. But I I have a production company called Next Indicated Action Productions. Um, We have done, uh, we did a show, I wrote a show uh, called Famous Couples Through History, the comedy version, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> where where myself and another actor played everybody from uh, um, uh, Adam and Eve uh, arguing about uh, their um, GPS getting out of the Garden of Eden <laughs> to uh, to uh, Marie and Pierre Cure on a blind date for through um, uh, 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 you know dating service and then Romeo and Juliet on their 60th wedding anniversary would it have been more tragic had they lived you know we were on walkers and all this stuff. <laughs> My production company, Next Indicated Action Productions, does primarily films now, and um, I had an acting student that uh, lost her eyesight, and I wrote a movie uh, for her called Of Service, and we just finished filming a movie called Reunion. 
and we're working on getting funding for another movie I've written called Honorable Differences. I, I've been a member of the Writers Guild since 1985, too, and with my comedy partner that I met back in Chicago, we wrote all our, our own material, and we won Best Actor and Best Actress awards for that. So that's my, my writing goes back, you know, over 35 years. And uh, so with acting uh, now, um, as I said, I've, I've acted in a few movies. I just acted in a, a feature film called Billy and Blaze that's coming out in the early fall. And I play a stern piano teacher back in the 1930s who um, is not happy about her young charge, her young student who uh, is obsessed with uh, uh, horse shows. And uh, so, uh, so I'm a I'm a funny, stern character, but uh, that that's called Billy and Blaze. It was based on a series of books in the 1930s. Um, I did another film uh, with uh, uh, a producer writer, Nina May, in the D.C. area uh, called First Lady, and it stars Corbin Burnson uh, mm -hmm. from Psych and uh, L.A. Law, and um, Nancy Stafford who used to. Uh, the um, uh, uh, Andy Griffiths uh, co-star on um, on the what was the show Matlock yeah, that mm -hmm. was it and Stacey Dash who was this is stuff I also helped cast that movie too about eighty of my students wound up doing uh, parts in that film big big film and uh, so I still still uh, do some theater occasionally uh, I did a play um, last year uh, with. Um, Ted Lang. Ted Lang was on Love Boat. He played Isaac, the bartender. And he wrote this uh, play called uh, George Washington's Boy. And I played Martha Washington in that. So I do theater from time to time. I'm more and more likely to do uh, films, um, short films. I've done some feature films. I also do voiceover work a lot. In fact, I'm, right now at my school, I'm teaching a voiceover session along with regular acting. So that's a mouthful, but you ask, and, that, <laughs> and that's what the deal is. Yeah, so you've done it all. <laughs> you, you've done... I have. I have. I've seen an agent for a while. Back in the back in the nineties, after uh, we'd had a writer strike and a screen act guild strike, and you know, um, I, I was raised by a mom in the depression who said she always had a job, but other people didn't because she would hustle and uh, try to find opportunities. So I've been very fortunate that God has blessed me to have different interests and different talents. So it's been able to keep me going. Uh, but I think one of the main connecting link with all of them is I try to be of service um, with the, the talents God has given me uh, to try to encourage other people, help them with their aspirations, just as it was done for me. Because uh, my two great mentors, I mentioned Josephine Forrestberg at the Second City. She was incredible. She would get on the phone, call people for you. Another, uh, she was in Chicago, and uh, the teacher I had in Los Angeles was the actor Dawes Butler, who was the voice of Yogi Bear and Huckleberry Hound, Prick Drop and Raw, Cap Crunch. And uh, he, too, would call casting directors for you and, and just was, a, and he called himself the mentor. And so between Dawes and Josephine, uh, they, they were my great acting coach angels and teachers. And, um, and they both said something similar to me when I said, how, how can I repay you? What, what can I do? And they'd say, well, you do it for somebody else. And that's how you repay me. So I've, I take that very seriously, and I try to go above and beyond to help people make connections. And um, as you know, Trey, different times when you're calling me, I'm, I'm always busy. I've always got mm -hmm. projects going on all the time. And uh, uh, so it's fun, though. I enjoy, I enjoy it very much. Yeah, you have to pay it forward to other people because you've been in that situation when you first started out, you know, so. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and sometimes I'll have brand new people come to me um, and I teach, uh, you know, from kids, teens, adults, all, you know, newcomers, pros, uh, whole deal. And I'll have some people coming. To me. I have no idea what to do. Well, why should they? And, and, and the thing is, I try to be helpful because sometimes, unfortunately, and, and not just in show business anywhere, but particularly in show business, there can be, you know, become a celebrity quick or kind of scam type deals 
and people are very vulnerable because also we're living in a time where it wasn't this mindset when I'm first coming along, but people think, oh, I can just do this really quickly. And they don't realize all the steps that are involved, especially with, with networking with people. Because, and, I, and, I, and I, I preach this like I'm in church <laughs> to my students all the time, to put down the cell phone and look at people in the eyes. Electronics are wonderful. But we've got to be able to to see people, and I think with as wonderful as uh, online, I mean, again, we're able to do this interview, and that's fa- fantastic, but I have so many um, actors that are kind of disconnected from others, whereas uh, I mentioned at the beginning here that I met uh, the actor John Mahoney when we were in acting class and and there were all these personal connections that I made with people and a lot of my friends and students kid me that you know I know everybody the immediate world well it's it's I'm a friendly person I like finding out about people so I asked my students to turn to their fellow students and ask them a couple of things about them them that they might not know they probably don't know and then also each week I ask my students to tell me three things they're grateful for before they start acting because I believe an attitude of gratitude will take you far in life no matter what your profession or area of interest is yeah yeah you have to be positive in any career you choose because positivity affects your life you know and absolutely yeah. Absolutely. My next question I mean, is just Go ahead. Yeah. No, no, I, I was just going to say it, it's so important not only to be positive, but people are always worrying about what they're going to get instead of focusing on what they have. And, you know, and we're all human and we get annoyed with the day. I mean, it was, I was I having a problem with my computer early. We start to get so irritated and then I. I stop and I say, oops, sorry, God, I forgot all the things I have, all the things that do work right, you know, and go right, and things are not the end of the world. And that's the thing. A lot of show business people, because we're emotional people, creative, dramatic people, we can, um, you know, it's so important to stay steady. In fact, I mentioned I had an acting student that lost her eyesight. And uh, she just woke up blind one morning, and um, she had had a stroke in the ocular canal. She had been um, she had been uh, diagnosed with glaucoma. Her name's Daria Finley. And I remember when she called to tell me about it, she said, "I have something to tell you, but I don't want you to be sad." And 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 I was just blown away. And she has this very calm personality. And she says, "Well, God has my back." And so I encouraged her to. Um, we wound up. Uh, doing some PSAs and voiceover, and then I encouraged her to do a one-woman show uh, because she's very funny, and she has this incredible attitude, and her show wound up going from here in the D.C. area out to Los Angeles. So, you know, I learned from her, too, about the positivity, but, but, uh, you know, that's, that's my production company is called Next Indicated Action Productions because a friend of mine in L.A. always used to say pray and do the next indicated action. So anyway, I went off on a whole spiel there, but you had another question, Trey. Sorry. <laughs> that's okay. I learned more. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> my next Good. question to you is what is the most challenging part for you being in the industry? What do you find is most challenging? working actress there because as the culture started to uh, change and get um, uh, edgier, um, you know, particularly when I was coaching uh, young female students, I'd be really shocked at some of the uh, material that I felt was age inappropriate. And not just for young people, for older people too. And I actually, before I left Los Angeles, that TV pilot season, I turned down 16, one, six, 16 jobs, oh, wow. either for myself or coaching other people. Yeah, uh, because I felt I couldn't contribute to what I feel would have been harmful to people. And that's the thing. So many 
actors and actresses are so eager, over eager to make it that they do things that had they thought about it, uh, they ordinarily wouldn't have done.